and we're back this time and today we are reviewing the arbalist for the darkest dungeon uh, we'll be talking about things like her stats her skills her camp skills her resistances her trinkets and her best team comps slash partners um, so uh, let's switch over to her stats so here are the arbalist stats uh, down here you'll see I extracted the arbalist from over here the exact same numbers and I put them right below the averages of the cast calculated by using this table. Um, we've also got our crit buff down here, which we'll talk about as we go through her stats. Uh, the Arbalist has uh, above average HP um, by 4 points. You'll see that she's the 4th highest in the game. Uh, but this jump right here from 47 to 55 is a huge gap. It's not as impressive as it sounds when you say 4th highest in the game. Uh, but she is the 4th highest in the game. And she comes with uh, the worst dodge in the game at 20, tied with uh, four other people. She has one of the lowest speeds in the game at 5. I believe that is tied for third worst, yes, with the Man at Arms. Man at Arms is also considered very slow, so we should consider Arbalist as a very slow character. Um, slow characters are inherently disadvantaged versus faster characters. Uh, we've got a crit rate that is very above average, is actually the highest in the game, tied with three other people. This is good. Uh, I like high crits. Uh, they give you more potential to stress heal. They give you more potential to deal damage. But when we look at her damage range of 7 to 14, we'll see that it is very below average. And that's not very exciting. It's not very below average. It's slightly below average. But it is notably below average because it is, when we sort this, it is one. It is tied for what it look, appears to be 8th place. And that's right around the middle of the cast. Actually, it's tied with two other people for 8th place. Uh, we've got a slightly above average stun resist, slightly below average blight resist, just about average disease resist, just about average move resist, slightly below average bleed resist, debuff resist, whatever. Uh, trap disarm at 70, which is below average, but that's fine because there are other people to trap disarm for us. We can also use the Arbalist to trap disarm if we have no better trap disarmer, mainly because she has so much HP, and she does tend to be a backline character, so she won't take too much more HP damage. Uh, it's not a it's not a bad idea to consider using Arbalist to trap disarm. She has an okay, respectable trap disarm, and it doesn't affect her as much as it it would affect other people. Uh, she is tied for she is tied like this many way with this many characters for the seventy range. And we've got a movement of zero forward and two back. Um, having a movement of zero forward is fine uh, for the Arbalist because Arbalist is an off healer. And she will be doing healing during the stalling phase, so you don't actually have to move her around like you will have to do for other characters who do not have uh, actions that quote-unquote pass their turns during the stalling phase. She will have actions to do during the stalling phase, is what I'm trying to say. And when she is uh, in the unlike uh, unfortunate scenario of being shuffled into first place, uh, the, the first place position, uh, she can get back to a position where she functions optimally in posi as a position 3 character. So this is this movement is actually fine for the Arbalist. I don't really see uh, a reason to criticize it. Uh, let's move on to a crit buff. Uh, since this is a very this is a very very high crit buff, uh, crit percentage uh, compared to other characters, we'll be activating this crit buff uh, pretty frequently. So how important is thirty three percent damage to marked? Uh, I don't like mark comps. They require a lot of investment. And thirty three damage to an enemy. Thirty three extra damage to an enemy who's already marked is generally overkill. Uh, mainly because, first of all, you had to crit them last turn. Or you had to crit an enemy last turn. Uh, which means you're probably already doing just fine in terms of getting through the hard part of the fight, which is the race part. So you're probably already in the stalling phase of the fight to some degree. Where the Arbalist will be much preferred to cast Battlefield Bandage, her, uh, her off-healing skill. And so th she won't really be able to make use of this, even if someone was marked. But the fact that you have to not only crit one turn, but also get a mark off on the next turn, and ha and then have Arbalist shoot that marked person to get the, the power out of this crit buff, makes this crit buff really situational and extremely niche. You will almost uh, never, you will almost never proc this crit buff. And that's why I just, I, I just find this... So sad for the Arbalist. This is a terrible crit buff for someone who crits so often. You just need more impact out of your crit uh, buff when you crit so often as the Arbalist. So generally, what am I seeing when I look at the Arbalist and her stats? I'm seeing a very durable character with respectable 
uh, HP, HP, high HP and low dodge is good, and respectably, or at least workable, resist, dot resist. The dot resist don't matter too much, because Arvalis will generally be in the back, but even if they were to apply to her, she does have such a huge HP pool that it doesn't matter. Um, the worst part of her spread that I would like to highlight is the fact that we have a position 3 and 4 character with high HP, which is something that I find very strange, because we don't need high HP when we're in the back. When we're in the back, we're not really taking as many high H, uh, HP... We're not taking that much HP damage. Um, so I would have preferred, obviously, to have less HP and preferred to have higher damage, uh, base damage, for example. But this is how she was balanced, and I'm a little unhappy with how these first five stats were uh, balanced. She has poor speed as well, which just really knocks her in terms of dealing damage. So here we've got the Arbalist skills. Um, you'll see that I've only selected three. Uh, this is where usually I would say this is the optimal set, but I've only selected three moves out of four. Um, the main reason I've selected three moves out of four for the Arbalist specifically is that I find her last move, uh, her, her fourth move, to be not really usable. Um, it's up to you what you want to run uh, in the last slot. Um, I usually click Rallying Flare. But I'm not going to lie to you guys, I, like, use it 0% of the time. Like, I probably use it at most 1% of the, in 1% of the Arbalist turns that I, that I have. Um, these three moves are basically the ones you'll be using 99% of the time. And so if you told me I can only run three moves on the Arbalist, I would run these three moves and I would feel no difference, really. Uh, but if you had to pick, I would say the fourth most optimal move is Rallying Flare. Uh, but let's talk about these moves one by one to see what why I feel that way. Her first move is Sniper Shot. It is launchable from positions 3 and 4 and uh, the enemy's positions 2, 3, and 4. Um, it's got an accuracy of 115, the highest in the game. The Arbalist is very well known for having a very good accuracy. Uh, very, it's very fitting because she is a sniper at the end of the day. And that's, that's really cool, I think, at least. It's got a crit mod of 9, which means... Uh, you're critting 19% of the time with this move, and that's pretty good. Uh, you'll be dealing pretty large amounts of damage when you crit, and you'll be critting about one every five times, and that's nice. Um, it's too bad her crit buff is not very good, because this would be a move that would really make use of the crit buff. And you'll see that um, these last two things on this move, plus 100% damage versus marked and plus 13 crit versus marked, looks very enticing. And yes, she is the main mark advantage like she's the main benefiter when you use uh, a mark cop like this is this is the this is the unit you would use to deal the most amount of damage when you were doing a mark comp this and the bounty hunter but since arbalist can reach positions two three and four uh, the arbalist is a lot more valuable than the bounty hunter who can only reach positions one and two with his mark benefiting moves um still though i think mark is not very um effective uh you just don't need to put this much damage into any of the backline characters. 100 damage and 13 crit is a lot of extra damage on this skill alone. Um, there's there's never going to be a backline character that's just... Uh, there's never going to be a backline size 1 character that isn't one of the champion mini bosses that you're going to need marked for. Um, and the category of enemies I just described is 90% of the game that you... 90% of the enemies you face in the game. So we, I would like to pre be prepared for 90% of the enemies rather than just the 10% of enemies that would be that Mark would be okay against. Um, and so I, I don't run Mark comps for that reason. But this is a good skill. It does have good reach. It projects damage from the Arbalist very well. It has a lot of accuracy, which means you don't have to trinket for accuracy, which means you can trinket for damage. And you can get some damage out of this skill. This is not a bad skill. That, don't get me wrong. I just don't value the last two tags as much. Her next skill is Suppressing Fire, launchable from positions 3 and 4, and AoEing the back two ranks of the enemy. Uh, same accuracy of 115, so it's very accurate. Uh, damage mod of negative 80, that's fine. Uh, the skill is not usually used for doing damage. It is used for uh, utility. And a crit mod of negative 6%, which means it has a 4% chance to crit either 3 or 4. Um... Or both. Uh, but 
and and that's bad. But it doesn't really matter because this move wasn't dealing damage anyway, so it was and it was gonna end up being a stress heal if you crit this, uh, the crit this move. Uh, it does debuff the target for. It does debuff the target for negative twenty accuracy, and nineteen crit. So basically, I believe nineteen crit ensures that. All oh wait, there is there are enemies on Stygian that crit you twenty five percent of the time, but it it basically ensures that like most of the enemies in the game will not crit you. Um, so I've heard a lot of arguments for this move. Uh, f because you can kind of make stress casters in the ranks three and four. Um, not hit you and not, like, stress cast you, essentially. And that's really nice and all, but it just doesn't do damage. And we just want, instead of, like, suppressing the stress casters and having them roll for accuracy just to try and hit you, we could, we could have been shooting them and trying to kill them. And the main reason why this move sucks, uh, suppressing fire, that is, is that the Arbalist has very low speed. 5 speed is nowhere close to outspeeding the stress casters in the game, who are on 7, 8, 9 in terms of speed. Um, so you'll never find yourself going before stress casters in the first round. Or you'll very rarely find yourself going ahead of stress casters in the first round. Um, unless you trinket her or quirk her for speed. Um, if you trinket and quirk her for speed, this move would be okay at least. Um, and you could certainly run it over uh, Rallying Flare. Uh, up to you. But I just never really trinket her for speed or quirk her. I mean, I, I quirk her for speed, but it's like not. It's still not impressive. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go out of my way to try and make this uh, work. Minus twenty accuracy does have applications though for a specific fight in the game, and that would be the uh, the prophet who already has decently low accuracy with the rune of rubble, and you can decrease his accuracy further. He's very prone to debuffs. Uh, that's why you can use the occultist or the leper to debuff him. Uh, and Suppressing Fire is also a way to cheese the Prophet fight. Um, though, of special note is that it hits positions 3 and 4. So, uh, after you destroy the pew in position 3, he'll move up, and hopefully you'll destroy the pew in position 1 or 2, and he'll move up again, at which point Suppressing Fire will no longer hit the Prophet. So you will have to finesse the fight a little bit, in that you have to lower the HPs of all the pews uh, to, to near 0, and then destroy them all in the same turn or the same fewish turns before you kill the Prophet. Um, so there is special mention for this move. It does have a niche, but you have to be a little more careful. Her next move is Sniper's Mark, launchable from positions 3 and 4, and targeting the enemy positions of 2, 3, and 4, accuracy base of 120. That's good. I like my marks hitting if I were to ever use my marks. Uh, damage mod, whatever. Like, doesn't deal damage. I don't know why they even included that. It doesn't deal damage, whatever. Uh, marks the target and debuffs that target for negative 30 dodge. So this is part of the dodge debuffing category of marks, and the dodge debuffing category of marks is not very exciting to me, especially when we're marking for the Arbalist, who has insane crit, uh, insane accuracy already. And you, c I, generally, I trinket for accuracy, just to make sure I hit, or I quirk for accuracy. Those are the strongest quirks in the game, accuracy quirks and accuracy trinkets. Are the strongest in the game that is and so i very i very often find myself not needing to debuff dodge and so this 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 dodge debuff portion of it is not very important to me it's nice but um i would rather the minus protection marks of the uh the of the bounty hunter and the houndmaster over this and i'm not excited about mark comps to begin with so i don't even run this uh you could make a case of course if you are fond of mark comps to try to click this over rallying flare that's fine. Uh, let's move on to our next skill, though. Bola is actually the only skill I would recommend you never run, because it is actually strictly inferior to um, a lot of these other skills. Uh, Bola is a launchable, launchable from positions 3 and 4, and AoEs the positions 1 and 2. So the accuracy being at 115 is good, yet again. Damage mod being at negative 50 is whatever. Uh, this is supposed to be a utility move, so the accuracy, the, the damage mod doesn't matter too much. And the crit is plus six, which is pretty okay. It brings it to 16 crit for two for two enemies, so you can get a stress heal off of this. It's one out of six times. You'll be hitting two people, so that's two of your six times, kind of. Uh, but what it does and why it's supposed to be utility, I guess, is it, it tries to move the positions one and two enemies by knocking them back one each. 
um, but it knocks them back at one each at a move chance of 105%. 105% move chance is so low. It is beyond low. It basically never happens, and even when it does happen, it could it could come out to the to the it could come out that you move both positions one and two, but you move position one first, so it gets pushed back, and then you move position two, which is the new position one, back into position two. So you didn't move those characters. It's that's a possibility. You didn't actually move those characters, right? Um, the other possibility is you just move position one into position two, and position two just stayed in position one which also doesn't really make a difference some of the time because positions one and two, they don't really, they're the front liners and they don't really care if they're swapped most of the time. Uh, the, only, the only time which this would be a useful skill is if you moved position two into position three and then that disrupts the back line as well. So that's the only case where it's good and that's not a very likely case, uh, that's not a very likely scenario to occur. So this move is just bad. It's not good for damage dealing it's not good for utility. It's not good for stress healing, because there is a better stress healing move. There's a more, there's a more, there's one that's more likely to hit, and there's one that's more likely to deal with the backline to uh, deal with the stress casters before they stress cast you. That's sniper shot, obviously. And uh, it it does have the niche, quote unquote, of being able to interact with position one, which sniper shot doesn't. But so does blind fire, and we'll talk about blind fire right now. Blind fire is launchable from any position on your team and hits any of the enemy's positions. And what it really does is it picks a random target of the uh, enemies that are alive, so not the corpses. It picks a random target out of the enemies that are living and it hits them or it, it tries to hit them. And by tries, I mean it has an accuracy base of 95. An accuracy base of 95 is horrible. It is the leper and it is, it is tied with the leper for the worst accuracy in the game. Um... And really, blind fire shouldn't be used that often. Um, the only scenario where blind fire is used is if you want to end the fight. And that's the only utility blind fire has. If you want to end the fight, and obviously when you are ending the fight uh, after recovering for a long time, the enemy will be in position one, and that's where Arbalist cannot reach at all with sniper shot. And so blind fire is your best bet. Uh, blind fire being able to deal a lot of damage with only a damage mod of negative 10 can help you end the fight that way. And I would definitely recommend that over Bola. Um, yes, a crit mod of plus four, it doesn't matter. This move isn't dealing that much damage either way. And a self buff of plus five speed. This self buff doesn't really matter. You're never going to you're never going to use this in the beginning of the fight, thinking Arbalus will be faster, and so that'll be nice. Um, it does it also has random targeting, so you can't even you can't even try to finish off an enemy while the arb and, and get a speed buff for the arbalist it's not worth it in my opinion so this is really not often used if honestly if you told me i can really run two moves on the arbalist i'd run these two moves and i'd be i'd pretty much play her the same way but uh this is a good third move to run it definitely has applications that the other moves don't and uh we'll we'll go on we'll move on from there battlefield bandage this is a healing skill for the arbalist launchable from positions three and four and can heal anyone in your team. It heals for a small amount of 4 to 5, which is not very notable, but the most important part of this move is that it buffs the buffs the target for extra healing received. And that's what makes this skill really really insane. It makes this skill, that buff alone, makes the Arbalist one of the best, I think honestly the best off healer in the game. And the reason for that is that uh, obviously this buff lasts for 3 rounds and so you can, over three rounds, just concentrate healing from the Arbalist to this target. And the first round, you'll be healing four to five, which is not very exciting. But the next round, you'll start to heal for five to five to seven. And the round after that, you'll be healing for, let's see, that's like 70%. So 70%. So that's seven to, seven to 9 seven to nine is what you'll be healing on the third heal. And on the fourth heal... You'll be healing 7 to 9. So you'll be healing 7 to 9, 7 to 9, 7 to 9. 7 to 9 is the, the exact, is roughly the same as a Vestal heal. Um, untrinketed, obviously. Um, and so it is slower than the Vestal heal, but we you can you can heal for these piddly amounts and get to, and you can ramp up, and you can stay ramped up uh, by repeatedly spamming Battlefield Bandage. And it's very easy to do that, um, as long as you run good stunners and stuff in front. 
And obviously, you're, when you're running the Arbalest as an off healer, you're not going to be using her as the only healer. Um, there will be other characters that can double up uh, with healing on that character you're trying to heal. And their heals will get more value as well because that because of this buff. And uh, this buff affects a lot of things. It affects the healing received from Flagellant's healing over time. It affects um, self-heals. So if you put this on Abomination and he uses Solemnity... I mean, uh, Abomination, he uses Absolution. And if you put this on a Leper and he uses Solemnity or uh, the Houndmaster and he uses Lick Wounds, uh, those all benefit from this buff. Uh, as well as uh, this buff stays on at the end of a fight. Uh, after you've exited the fight and you are in the hallways, this buff does stay on the character. And so you could, if in dire situations, you could eat food, and even that food's healing gets buffed. And so this skill is just, there's so many applications for this skill uh, in terms of keeping your characters higher HP um, that I just think it makes her the best off healer. And not to mention, she does have a trinket that buffs her own healing by plus 33%, which is the same as Vestal in terms of buffing healing. And so you should really consider this skill as a mini Vestal. Uh, obviously it doesn't do AoE healing like the Vestal does, which is the Vestal's most powerful thing. But this is very notable, and I like that. Uh, moving on though, Rallying Flare, um, launchable from any of your positions and targets all of the enemy positions. Has an accuracy of 115, that's pretty good. Damage mod of doesn't do any damage at all. Um, bypasses stealth and de-stealths the enemies. And uh, Torch plus 7. And it clears marks, clears stuns, and attempts to stress heal the other heroes. So, why do I run this skill? I honestly don't know. Um, I think that I run it for the... Obviously, you run it for the utility of clear stun, clear mark, and stress minus 3. Um, but the stress minus 3 portion is uh, only a 67% chance to work. And it doesn't even work on the Arbalist herself because it says other heroes specifically. So, you have a 67% chance of healing minus 3 stress across your team, uh, across your other three characters. Not very exciting. But certainly something she could do in the stalling phase of the fight. If everyone's high HP already, there's no point in using Battlefield Bandage, of course. And so you try to Rallying Flare instead for some HP heal, uh, for, for some stress heals. Uh, obviously, clearing stun from your characters is also very powerful. Uh, especially since Arbalest goes very slow. So this is one thing we can do to take advantage of her speed. We can have other characters get stunned uh, before she goes. And then she can use Rallying Flare at the end of the turn to de-stun uh, de those characters so they can move next turn. Uh, there's a lot of Mark Synergy in the Wield, and the Mark Synergy uh, with the Spiders, of course, which you can use Rallying Flare to uh, dispel, kind of. And so that's pretty nice. And of course, stealth, the Bypass Stealth, I don't really value that too much, but it's something the Arbalist can at least try to do to help. Maybe Rallying Flare gets some usage one time when you just open with such a powerful um, burst damage that you can delete the other priority target in 3 and 4, which is Stealth, and then Arbalist can just de-stealth the other guy, maybe. So that's why I run Rallying Flare. I, I, it's just for the potential <clears throat> for the potential of stress healing and maybe stealth helping. De-stealth helping. Uh, let's move on to her camp skills, though. Field addressing. Uh, one companion, 75% chance to heal 35% of their HP and 25% chance to heal 50% instead and removes bleeding. Uh, this is a okay camp skill when you use it. I don't like to use healing camp skills, uh, mainly because you can heal mid-fight. Uh, you can, if you if you manage your recovery phase well enough, you should not need to use this. Uh, but when you do need to use this, this is a very efficient heal. This is one of the strong. Arbalest has the strongest HP heals in in terms of camp skills in the game, um, and so this is pretty notable for being a very effective. I mean, it, it costs two which means it costs the same as Wound Care. And Wound Care heals for 15%, and this heals from at minimum 35%. So it's at least 20%. It's 20% extra in terms of effectiveness over uh, Wound Care. So it is notable for that. It only removes Bleeding instead of Wound Care, which removes both Blight and Bleed. But you really don't often use these skills to, just to remove Blight and Bleed. Uh, you use them for the HP heal if you need to. So a uh, good skill in terms of compared to a Generalist uh, skill, but just not some something that excites me too much. Uh, marching plan, time cost of three. All companions gain plus two speed. Um, all companions meaning not the Arbalist, which means everyone else on the team gains plus two speed. Plus two speed is very, very powerful thing to buff. Um, it is the same as having a speed quirk, and every point of speed will get your characters closer and closer to outspeeding the enemy 100% uh, of the time, or 
yeah, pretty like for a larger percent of the time. And obviously, going first is very important uh, in terms of first for damage dealers, for stunners, for for buffers, for like guarders, for everybody. Um, you well, you want to go first. So actually, marching plan is very very powerful. Uh, it, it's only time cost of three, so it's easier to slot in than the time cost four. I would honestly say this 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 camp skill should cost four. This is a very very powerful buff. I use this a lot, and I'm very happy with this skill. Although it does miss the the part where we buff the Arbalist, who's the slow character, one of the slower characters in the game, which I would love to buff to at least average speed, but whatever. If we're gonna, if she's gonna be slow, we can just let her be slow. Um, and Restring Crossbow is her next camp skill. It's a self buff of 10 accuracy uh, to your range skills, plus 20% damage to your range skills, and plus 8 crit to your range skills. So the thing is that she only has range skills uh, across her set. You'll see these are all range, so it really it just means 10 accuracy, 20 damage, and 8 crit, and minus 2 speed for the next 4 battles. Um, uh, so let's break it down. These, these numbers look really high, but let's break down why I don't think this is a too great of a skill. Uh, plus 10 accuracy isn't needed. Uh, the Arbalist, as we went through the, her skills, you, you, you saw, like, these are very high accuracy skills. Most of them are 115 and up. That's very amazing. Um, you don't really need the accuracy portion of this. Um, if you needed, I mean, she has a good trinket also for uh, accuracy as well. So there's no reason to run, uh, there's no reason to not run that trinket when you need the accuracy and instead click this camp skill. Like, don't do that. Uh, don't click this camp skill. Just run that trinket instead. Uh, plus twenty percent damage looks pretty good. It is a very very heavy um, damage buff, but she does have a very poor base damage, so uh, compared to other characters, so the plus percentage here isn't as uh, powerful as other characters who buff their damage, like Hellion, who has one of the higher damage bases in the game, buffing for twenty five at the cost of three. Uh, just not too amazing. Uh, eight crit is okay that's pretty good I, I like the eight crit on this uh, it gives her a more consistent crit uh, her main damage skill is obviously nine percent so nine eight and ten makes it 27 so 27 percent chance of the time uh, 27 percent chance that you crit that's pretty good uh, i would click this um for the eight percent crit um this is clickable um but just don't expect it to carry your team it probably won't do that uh if you get lucky crits it will carry your team and you'll be very amazed by it but um, there are better camp skills uh, in the game, and this is probably one of the last ones you'll click. Um, obviously, when you need damage on your characters, like when you just you're just at perfect condition, you'll probably want to click mar marching plan. And if you have extra camp points, you you'll consider clicking restring crossbow. The worst part of this is obviously that it subtracts the the arbalist speed by two, but you can just medicinal herb that away, and this is a okay skill at least. It's it's not it's not as impactful as you think, but it is good. Triage is a time cost of 3 and heals all companions 20% of their HP. That's very good, just comparing it to this. 20% is greater than 15, costs 1 extra, heals for heals 2 other people on the team. I think that's enough to say that's good enough to, to sometimes click. And uh, that's about it. That's all I gotta say about it. So let's move on to her trinkets. Okay, so here are the Arbalist trinkets. Uh, just scrolling up just to check if those are runnable. They're not. Uh, of special mention, though, is Medic's Greaves. I actually think this is a late-game Arbalist staple. Uh, in the late-game, Arbalist is a very strong off-healer, uh, obviously. Well, after those numbers have uh, scaled up, to those, uh, after the numbers on her battlefield bandage have scaled up, uh, we would like to turn her into a, an off-healer. And Medic's Greaves at 33% healing skills is very good at doing that. When we compare that to the very rare uh, trinket Junius Head, which gives plus 30% healing skills and gives you plus 20% extra stress, this compares very, very favorably to Junior's head, that, and that's amazing to me. 33% for no stress is a lot better than 30% for 20% stress. Uh, this, this is actually very overtuned, in my opinion, and turns the Arbalist into, you could attempt to use her as a main healer. I still wouldn't recommend it, but it's usable, it's doable uh, in, some, in certain dungeons. So uh, this is, I don't know why this is in the game. Definitely run this. Definitely pick this up as soon as you can. This is definitely one of the... Um, Uncommon trinkets I'm keeping my eye out for. Uh, but let's move on to a rare. Bullseye Bandana, plus 8 accuracy, plus 5% crit, minus 4 dodge. This compares exactly... You can b compare this directly to a Focus Ring, which gives plus 10 accuracy, plus 5 crit, and minus 8 dodge. And you'll see that this is basically a Focus Ring that doesn't subtract too much dodge from the Arbalist. And that's pretty good. Uh, losing 2 accuracy is not that big for an Arbalist, and... 
because she already has one of the highest accuracies in the game, and minus four dodge instead of minus eight dodge is whatever. It doesn't really matter. Either way, the Arbalist has one of the lowest dodges in the game. So this is actually a decent rare trinket because it compares decently favorably to a very rare trinket, but I would still say that Focus Ring is better just because of the aforementioned fact that she has no dodge anyway, so why, why not decrease it to the maximum and trade it all off for as much accuracy as possible. Um, but this is definitely a trinket you can run in the mid-game. And, of course, you can run it in the late game expecting this to carry you in terms of accuracy. This is the accuracy trinket I was talking about when I was talking about uh, her camp skill restring crossbow. This is decent. Her very rare is Wrathful Bandana, plus 25% damage if in position 4, plus 30% debuff skill chance, and minus 50% healing skills. Um, the only debuff she has in her entire set is Suppressing Fire. I don't think that move is very good, so the plus 30% debuff skill chance is not very enticing to me. Uh, plus 25% damage in position 4, that means you're locked to position 4, and you are working off of a poor damage base, so this is not very impactful either. And it subtracts her healing skills by 50%, which kills off her ability to off-heal in the late game. Uh, that uh, these these trade-offs are this trade-off is too impactful for me to care about these two things. Uh, if you really wanted her to deal damage, you could instead just give her Dismiss's head. Dismiss's head is perfectly fine uh, as a substitute for Raffle Bandana. I actually would say it's a direct, uh, strict upgrade to Raffle Bandana just because you just really want the healing skills, and you you'll take less HP and you'll take more stress for that. I would say. Very bad, very rare. rare. Um, not not very applicable to what the Arbalist does in the late game. So what other what what would be a a good trinket set for the Arbalist in the late game? I would run Bullseye Bandana and Meg's Greaves together. That's a decent uh, combination. Of course, you could also run uh, Focus Ring and Medic's Greaves. That's a pretty good combination. Uh, Medic's Greaves is a staple in the late game, uh, basically, is what I'm trying to say. And the other trinket is whatever you want, really. Uh, you can trinket her for damage, dismiss his head, go for a Legendary Bracer since she's so slow anyway. It doesn't really matter if you make her slower. Um, stuff like that. Just whatever you want. If you want damage, put damage trinkets on her. If you want accuracy, put the Bullseye and Bandana on her. Uh, if you want, uh, you can put on you can put on Ancestor's Map. You can double up on healing trinkets, give her Chirurgeon's Charm or Junior's Head, plus Medic Screeves, and then she becomes a really good healer. Um, stuff like that. I don't see why you can't do double healing trinkets and be happy with that. But uh, let's move on to her team comps. So we're here with the Arbalist, and uh, we we're talking about her team comps. Um, the Arbalist is a position 3 and 4 character and she is a healer she is directly outclassed by the vessel in that regard uh so let's uh, because the arbalist is a off healer but she is able to project damage um and a good amount of it into ranks 3 and 4 so um since she's not healing at the exact same she, she, since she's not healing at the exact effectiveness of the vestal we need to bring another off healer with her most of the time and the best one is uh, Occultist. They are both... Uh, the Occultist is unreliable with his heals, and so buffing it with the healing... Um, the, the plus healing buff of Battlefield Bandage is very good, because when the Occultist rolls low heals, the Arbalist will cover the healing for him. And when the Occultist rolls medium heals, uh, those will be buffed into bigger heals. And of course, the bigger heals, you don't really need the buff for. Um, but it'd be nice, you know, just to get a little more HP out of him. This is a good combo, and then you start to see that you're bringing uh, two Mark members of the comp. You could also go straight back to the Mark comp idea, where you go like this. Whoops. Where you go like this. That's fine. Um, you could move these members around, depending on what you want. This is Mark for Death. I accidentally built it again. But uh, other off-healers in the game... <clears throat> other off-healers in the game are, of course, the Crusader. Which you can start in rank 4, have him Holy Lance up twice, and then... Uh, in the in the stalling phase of the fight, have him use either battle battle heal or inspiring cry in combination with the arbalist uh, arbalist battlefield bandage, and that's very effective. Um, PD is the other healer uh, off healer in the game uh, who can take care of blights and bleeds at the same time. This is a decent comp as well. You can stun the back line, get rid of the back line. Good stuff. Good reach. Uh, what else? Uh, what are we starting to lack, right? Let's let's build off PD. What are we starting to lack? We're starting to we have stuns, we have backline reach, um, so we need another stunner. Would be nice. Um, another good stunner would be bounty hunter, and then we and then we can run this mini mark core. Um, that's pretty good. 
and then we've got a frontline character we could do whatever with. We're lacking in damage a little bit, and so we could just stick on a Hellion. Or we could also do this. Whoops. We also have Highwayman here, and then have Bounty Hunter in front. That's also pretty good. This is a good comp. Um, the last off healer, I would say, is the Flagellant. Flagellant here also offers a decent amount of damage, and then you could just go right back to running the Bounty Hunter I just clicked off right here. That's a decent comp. Right. So, uh, what do I rate the Arbalist in conclusion? She's got a very awkward stat spread where she doesn't really have that many damage um, stats, and in instead the devs have decided to give her a lot of HP. Um, HP is not very relevant for a backliner, so that doesn't really matter too much. And I'm a little sad because that means her 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 stats were skewed more toward having not the stats that she needed. And she's very slow, so she's not exactly the best off healer because that means you have to take the full round of enemy attacks before she can get off her healing. And you'll sometimes want to get off her healing, but maybe get crit or something in the middle of trying to heal and have to heal for longer. Um, that's the main problem with her being slow. She's not a good damage dealer because she's slow. Um, she does have amazing trinkets for, uh, for healing. And that's really exciting because she does turn into a very good healer in the late game. And her comps are decently flexible uh, to a degree, really, because you do have to run another off healer. Running another off healer is a good idea because it double dips into the battlefield bandage buff. Um, and it doesn't heal quite enough. It scales a little slowly. So you do want another healer uh, on on the team just to make sure that you do, your characters don't die or they don't take too much damage while you are ramping up. Uh, overall, uh, according to that criteria, I actually rate her to be um, C tier. Uh, lower C tier, actually. And the main reason for that is just that she's slow and her skills aren't very exciting. There's three skills that you're really excited to run and the fourth skill is kind of eh. And so she is wasting a slot on her bar, her action bar. Everything you are trying to do uh, with the Arbalist is just better done by other characters in the game. Uh, so for example, if you're trying to heal, just slap a Vessel on the team. Vessel also projects damage very well and does a respectable-ish amount of damage. It is, it is lower than the Arbalist, but when you're bringing a healer, you'd want them to heal most of the time anyway. And the Arbalist isn't really a good damage dealer anyway. She's slow. Um, and she's slow and doesn't have a good damage uh, range. Uh, the, someone like the Houndmaster, who has one point less of damage but can actually bleed the characters that he's attacking, is probably better than the Arbalist in terms of dealing damage. Uh, someone like the Crusader, who's also a backline damage dealer uh, with Holy Lance, does also deal a lot more damage than the Arbalist and, and reach the same ranks as her. So overall, she's just kind of outclassed in the damaging, uh, damage dealing role as well. And in terms of utility, she's got basically none. So, uh, also she's not a stunner. Uh, yeah. Not, not a very exciting character to me. Uh, though I am very, very happy with her Battlefield bandage. And that's the Arbalist review. Uh, thank you for watching.